Well, hi there and welcome to the Rivers Church YouTube page. We're so glad that you've taken the time to join us, whether you're watching from near or far. In today's message, Pastor Andre will be encouraging us on how to handle divine delays while remaining full of faith and full of hope. So grab a notebook and a pen and let's listen to the message. One of the most distressing things that can happen is when you get to the airport and you're about to board and you see that sign next to your flight that says delayed. And I know that delays in our life are highly frustrating. Are you like me? We live in an instant society. We want everything now. In fact, we live in such an instant society that if something takes a little bit too long, we, we get angry, we get aggressive, especially in Johannesburg. Everything is done in a hurry. We have instant relationships, instant marriages, instant finance, and even instant divorces. People want instant gratification, and they want instant answers to problems. But I don't know if you have noticed, God is not a God that works in the instant. God works over time. He delays. He makes us wait. And it can be very frustrating when you're wanting answers. You're waiting for an answer to come from the bank for finance, for your business, for your home. When you're waiting on a bond to be approved, you get frustrated. It's taking five days. It should take two days. What's the matter? And when you're waiting on promotion, you're waiting for a partner. When, Lord, I'm getting on in years. Divine delays can frustrate us. James tells us in James chapter 5 and verse 7, be patient then brothers and sisters, until the Lord's coming. See how the farmer, notice the farmer, the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop, patiently waiting, notice the word waiting, for the autumn and spring rains. You'll notice that those speaking there of seasons. Then it says you too, again, be patient and stand firm because the Lord's coming is near. These four verses tell us repeatedly to be patient and to wait, and we are told over 300 times in Scripture to be patient and wait, because God is not an instant God. He often works through what I call divine delays. Today I want to speak to you, and I've entitled the message, Handling Divine Delays. We need to know how to handle the delays of God, or we will become highly frustrated. How many of you know God uses things to grow us and to test us, and often delays God will use them? But we need to understand something very important this morning about waiting. What is accomplished in waiting, and how do we need to view waiting? Now, in the book of James, we just read the word waiting and wait several times. It is a compound Greek word. In other words, it's made up of two words, and the Greek word is ekdekomai, the first part of it is ek, which means place of origin or starting point. And dekomai means to receive, take, or accept. Now, to literally summarize that, it's to wait for something to come that has already left its point of origin. Some of us think that the Lord's coming, he promised, but now he's having a fine chat in heaven and he's comfortable on the throne. So he's delayed. No, when he speaks, when God speaks, it's already left its point of origin. Now, why is it taking so long? Well, you don't understand what's going on in the heavenlies and the divine plan of God. Sometimes when we pray, we think God hasn't heard. No, it's already left its point of origin, and it's on its way. That makes waiting a lot easier. So you're waiting for money. If you've prayed and you've got the promises of God, it's left its point of origin. It may have not left APSA or Standard Bank or Ned Bank. <laughs> but as far as God's concerned, you need to wait knowing that God will make it happen and that it will come. Maybe you're waiting for a baby. It's months and weeks and you've tried and there's been medical treatment. You need to believe that it's left its point of origin because fruitfulness of the womb is God's desire. And we need to keep holding on. Maybe it's a breakthrough in your business. Maybe it's a loan that you're wanting. Maybe it's something else that you've been praying for, you've been praying for a, for a change of circumstances and it's not changing, trust that in your waiting, God has already signaled that it will happen for you. Do you know that the Apostle Paul 
was not taken by surprise with delays. In fact, he factored them into his plans, knowing how God works. And he experienced it, and we will talk about it a bit later again. But in 1 Timothy 3, he says to the church, I hope to come to you soon, but I'm writing these instructions to you so that if I am delayed, he factors it in. You may know how one ought to behave in the household of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and bulwark of the truth. Paul understood that there would be divine delays, and so he mentions this to the church. It doesn't take him by surprise. I want to give you six things. It's the number of man, so the number of our responsibility. Six things that we can do to handle divine delays better because we will experience them whether we like it or not. Number one, the first thing to understand practically is that God's delays are not God's denials. When God delays something, he's not saying no, he's saying not yet. And we need to be patient, and uh, just because God hasn't done something yet doesn't mean that he won't do it at all. In fact, one of the most profound illustrations of this is the story in John chapter 11 of Mary and Martha and Lazarus. Lazarus dies, and uh, they send a message to Jesus. He's not there, he's in another city. And they ask him to come, and the Bible clearly says, and he delayed three days. And you think, geez, he's trying to be nasty? Why? These people are close to him. They lived in Bethany. He spent all his time there, back and forth to Jerusalem. These were the closest friends Jesus had. But the Bible says he delayed three days. And, and then we read in the King James Bible that when Jesus finally got there, he told them to roll the stone away, and the King James, as only the King James can describe it, the people said, Lord, by this time he stinketh. <laughs> Understatement. But the Bible is portraying something powerful here in that Jesus waited so long so that he would stink. Because if you raise someone who's not stinking, well, were they dead? Jesus waits long enough to make sure this is not a coma, this is not a sleep, he's not just swooning, it's not just the weather, he hasn't just got some low uh, heartbeat, he stinketh. And then he calls him out, and so the whole place knows that this has to be God, because only God can raise the dead, not a human being. See, when God delays something, there's a divine design behind it. And it seems initially like it's a nasty denial, but actually, you know, God is working. And we need to recognize that there's a bigger picture than just our prayer request and our instant desire in our instant society. In John chapter 11, it says, when he heard this, that Lazarus had died, Jesus said, this sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory so that God's son may be glorified through it. God's got a plan and he will make himself great through it, but it doesn't seem like it to us. Here's a thought that I want you to hold on to today. And you can note this down if you're making notes. God's delays may hurt us at times, but will never harm us. God's delays are not God's denials. Number two, God's delays are because of God's seasons. You'll notice in the book of James, James talks about the farmer waits. Farmer doesn't go and plant and then the following month look for the harvest. He knows that there are seasons and the farmer understands that there are things he has to do, and then he has to wait. And the definition of a season this morning is quite important. It is a time frame, I like this, an appropriate time that has been allotted for something to happen. Summer is when something happens. Autumn is when something happens. Winter, spring, they are seasons where certain things are meant to happen. So farmers understand that easily. In fact, in Genesis 8, it says, as long as the earth endures, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night will never what? See, it's the same with spiritual seasons. See, farmers don't expect to a harvest in the wrong season. They know how seasons work, and they know the allotted season for harvest, and then so they wait on the Lord. You know, birds know seasons better than human beings do. I was uh, reading in Jeremiah, and, and I'll elaborate on this. Jeremiah says in chapter 8, even the stork in the sky knows her appointed seasons, and the dove, and the swift, and the thrush observe the time of their migration. But my people do not know the requirements of the Lord. We want to get to know God's seasons. Then you won't fret. Some of you are wanting something in a season that you're not meant to have it. You want things, you, you're too young still for the season 
that you can enjoy that and handle it correctly. Like Joseph at 17, it was not his season to be prince of Egypt. But at 30, he stepped into it. Are you with me? I want to encourage you when there's a delay in your life, you need to recognize the season. So let me give you some tips here. Don't misread your season. Don't think you're in a season of harvest when you're in a season of dormancy. You'll only frustrate yourself. Did you know that a tree goes through four seasons a year? Isn't that true? Spring, summer, autumn, winter. But it only bears fruit in one. But you know what we are like? I declare, I decree, I confess. Every season I will be blessed. No, no, no. You've got to wait for the season. And seasons of waiting develop us, and they also acknowledge God's sovereignty. God is Lord of all, and He knows what He's doing. And there's a time. Don't blame God. Don't accuse God. Listen, and don't look at other people's seasons and become envious or jealous or resentful. There's a wonderful memorial for war veterans called the Anthem Veterans Memorial in Arizona. And it's a monument that's been put up in honor of all the people that have served in the armed services who have died in the United States. And the interesting thing about it, it's got these granite looking columns with holes in them. And you'll see that seal on the ground. Can you see the sun is shining on it? The sun shines on that seal only one day every year. And let me get the date. It is on November the 11th, Veterans Day. So only on that day can you go there and see that lit up. The rest of the time it doesn't shine there. It doesn't spotlight that thing. I believe it's like that sometimes with us. Things have not lined up yet with God so that you would be in the spotlight to have your season. Wait. Trust Him and your season will come. Trust God to change your season. He's the one who changes seasons. In Daniel chapter 2, and verse 20 tells us that, praise the name of God forever and ever. Wisdom and power are his. He changes times and seasons. He deposes kings and raises up others. Maybe you're waiting for promotion. You're so, so-and-so got promoted. Oh, it must be because she was a woman or because she slept with the boss or because of this. And you start to get bitter instead of saying, Lord, I trust you like Joseph did for my season. You see, sometimes your season is bigger than just your comfort. There's a bigger picture that God's got in mind that you have no concept of. When Joseph was in prison, the Bible says that the Lord was with him. Well, if the Lord was with him, why didn't the Lord let him out? No, there was a bigger picture. Isn't that true? It was tied to Pharaoh's life and the whole life of Egypt. So God kept him in prison until Pharaoh got a dream. Where did Pharaoh get the dream from? He got it from God. So God's keeping Joseph. Joseph's praying. What's happening? Why aren't you letting me out? When am I going to get a girlfriend? I didn't touch her. <laughs> and God is waiting for Pharaoh to get the dream. And when the two connect, he comes out. But wait, wait, wait. It's not that simple. Because he comes out. He was there from 17. He comes out when he's 30. But remember, he had a dream that his brothers would bow down to him. So now he tells Pharaoh, hey, seven years of plenty, you need to save everything up. So from 30 to 37, that's when the years of plenty, then the famine started. Now if we go from 37, say five years into the famine, remember they started running out of food? His brothers came to Egypt. He's 42 when his brothers finally come and bow down to him. He got that dream in 17. Talk about delay. We've got to trust God to change our seasons he waited some 25 years, and we have to wait too. Look what Galatians says about waiting. It says, let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. At the proper time, God will do it. Is this helping you today? Number three, God's delays could mean God's judgments. Hmm. The sugar suddenly becomes a bit lemony now. I want to point out something to you that God is still dealing with the earth. He is in control and he does bring judgments. Nothing is just random and happening. This is not an alarm clock that's been wound up and then one day the alarm will ring and God has taken his hands off it. God is intricately involved. Problem is we don't see it. And we need to get a grip on it because it will help us with delays and with world affairs and even our own country. Now in the 7th century B.C., 
Judah was in a bad state. The people were violent. They were criminals. They were perverted, in fact. They were attacking each other. And the, the, the community and the nation of Judah was in a mess. And God was extremely unhappy. And it had been going on for a long time. And he was about to judge it. But in the midst of Judah is this prophet called Habakkuk. And Habakkuk sees all this stuff going on. He sees people corrupt, stealing from hospitals, driving through red robots. Now look what Habakkuk says. He prays like we pray. How long, Lord, must I call for help? But you do not listen. Or cry out to you violence, but you do not save. Why do you make me look at injustice? Why do you tolerate wrongdoing and corruption? Destruction and violence are before me. There is strife and conflict abounds. Therefore the law is paralyzed and justice never prevails. The wicked hem in the righteous so that justice is perverted. Maybe you've watched the news and prayed prayers like that about our country. Do you know what God actually responds to him and tells him after that? And we don't have time to read it. He says, I'm about to raise up the Babylonians and they are vicious people. They're going to come in and they're going to deal with Judah like you can't imagine. So just chill out. Now, hang on a minute here. You see, sometimes we think everything's about comfort and convenience. God says, no, a Christian living in a nation that turns its back on God is going to feel the effects of it. See, when it rains, Christians and non-Christians get wet. And sometimes when God rains judgment on a nation, we feel the sad effects and frustration of it. Maybe when we realize God's involved in it, we go, okay, we will keep a good spirit and we will wait on God for his timing. But maybe he's dealing with people because they're arrogant and they've turned their back on him. They've chosen woke over God. <laughs> Number four. I trust this is speaking to you this morning. Number four, the fourth thing about handling divine delays is this. Understand God's holding pattern. God's holding pattern. Some of you would know what a holding pattern is. Many wouldn't know. But if you've flown to London at any time, and I've been to London numerous times, flying, connecting elsewhere to Europe or to America especially, you fly via London on BA, and often when you get to London, the pilot tells you, and it's all false hope, they tell you, we have arrived at Heathrow. We are about to start our descent. Jelich. It never happens. We go into what's called a holding pattern. And two, three minutes later, we're not, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're not at the moment allowed to land at Heathrow. We will in just 10 minutes. Just be patient. Uh, we have to go into a holding pattern. And you look at your watch later, it's 30 minutes. And we get frustrated because we're there, but we're not there. You've been there, but not there in your Christian life. You see, the reason why they can't let you down, sometimes there's no place to park. They don't have one of those gates. The place is full. Can't bring another plane down, park it on the grass, have all these planes. Who came first? Okay, we've got to bring you here. No, wait, we've got to fly someone out. Okay, no, they just keep you in the air. And sometimes God, he is preparing and protecting us. And when it's the right time to land, we can land. You see, it could be three things that are going on here, and I've worded them like this. Maybe you can ask yourself this question when you're waiting or there's a delay. Uh, the first one is God's person is not ready. That could be you, could be someone else. See, when you're in a holding pattern in the sky, what's going on on the, earth, on the ground you don't know. It could be the runway, it could be a fault on the plane, it could be the fact that there's no staff, it could be anything. God's person is not ready. Number two, God's circumstances are not ready. He's still busy working, like with Joseph. Can't let you out of prison. I'd love to let you out. You're so faithful. But Pharaoh's not going to get the dream yet because the timing isn't right. And then number three, which is most important, God is not ready. You almost think of God's ready any time. No, he's not. He's chosen to limit himself to the universe and to his creation and the way he has worked. Now, here's the wonderful thing. When you're in a holding pattern, your attitude is extremely important. Are you going to get angry, frustrated, annoyed? You're going to complain to God, complain to everyone else, make everyone else's life a misery? Or are you going to wonder if perhaps God is using it for good? You know, Paul made missionary journeys all over the world, and he was in Athens on his second missionary journey. And I want to read to you what happened in the book of Acts, chapter 17. Just a few verses here. It says, now Paul, while Paul waited for them at Athens, he was held up and had to wait, it was a delay, his spirit was stirred in him. When he saw the city wholly given to idolatry, therefore disputed he in the synagogue with the Jews 
and with the devout persons and in the marketplace daily with them that met with him. The reason I chose the King James is because it says his spirit was stirred. It's the only translation that uses that word. I think Paul became highly annoyed when he saw what was going on, so God used him to minister. But it was not not enough because they didn't have enough access to people at that time. You know, the, the church was persecuted. But you know what happened during this period? They say this missionary journey took place. In the book of Acts is written from AD 30 to AD 62. This took place, I think it's in AD 49, You know what he did in AD 49 while he waited right there? He wrote the book of Galatians. And it was the first book written to the churches. And in fact, all the books written except one and two Thessalonians were all written when Paul was in Athens. And so we got 50% of the New Testament while he had a divine delay. Are you allowing that delay to be productive or negative? Imagine if we didn't have all the writings of Paul. I think if Paul was running around like he used to, so busy preaching and running everywhere, he wouldn't have had time to write the most valuable portion that we have today. And God allowed that in order to bring about something wonderful. Here's a thought for you today. Man's disappointments are often God's appointments. Don't allow frustration and, 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 and difficulty to drive you. Paul had time to gather his thoughts and to write the New Testament letters, and God was working Number five, God's delay should not make us lose sight of God's promises. When Israel was in the wilderness, the delay of the 40 years made them forget the promises of God. And we need to hold on to the promises of God no matter how long they're delayed. You can almost feel like, I think God may have changed his mind. I know the Bible says that about that, but probably not for me. No, keep holding on to the promises and don't lose sight of them, and don't allow your heart to get weighed down. Do you know the Bible tells us that Abraham and Sarah waited 60 years for a child? How many of you know that's a long time to wait? Some of you can't wait six years. 60 years. It's a long time. And I want us to read the story of what happened when they tried to make it happen. Genesis chapter 16. Now Sarai, Abraham's wife, had borne him no children, but she had an Egyptian slave named Hagar. Let's just stop there. Keep it on the screen. When you think of a slave, you think of someone in rags. You know, someone who stands outside the door, maybe even chains on their feet. Come here. (laughs) Big corns on their feet. Dirty hands. No, he's not done at Santa City. No, no, no. this This was an Egyptian. When she came in the room to bring tea, Abraham's like, Now watch, so she said to Abraham, this is is Sarah, his wife. The Lord has kept me from having children. Go sleep with my slave. Perhaps I can build a family through her. She's making a plan. Abraham agreed to what Sarah said. Why wouldn't he? (laughs) If you say so, babe. I mean, it's up to you entirely. (laughs) So Abraham, after Abraham had been living in Canaan 10 years, Sarah, his wife, took the Egyptian slave Hagar and gave her to her husband to be his wife. He slept with Hagar and she conceived. When she knew she was pregnant, she began to despise her mistress. Now watch this. Then Sarai said to Abraham, you are responsible for the wrong. I am suffering. (laughs) Notice what she says. I put my slave in your arms and now that she knows she's pregnant, she despises me. May the Lord judge between you and me. This is typical of women. Ladies, forgive me. Couldn't help it. Can you see what happens when you make a plan? And you can regret the decisions because you lost sight of the promises and you started making a plan. Sometimes sin can hinder your prayers. I know we don't like to think of it, but David reminds us in Psalm 66, if I cherished sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. In other words, and there would be a delay. So we've got to examine ourselves. Am I at fault here? Do I keep doing something and repeating this behavior when God has convicted me and spoken to me? And I know I live under grace, but hey, it could be me. I'm contradicting the will of God by my disobedience, and God has spoken to me about it. I need to deal with it. Or it could be spiritual warfare. Now, we don't get all weird. Daniel prayed in the Bible, it tells us, and it took 21 days to get an answer. And you know what it says in the book of Daniel? We don't have time to read it. Daniel chapter 10. 
It says that Michael came and told him, I heard your prayer when you first prayed, but I've been fighting the prince of Persia, all heavenlies, and now I finally have come to answer you. There could be spiritual stuff going on, and you just have to wait while God deals with it. Don't walk up and down in your house. I bind you, devil. I rebuke you, neighbor. You're a sinner. You're a, you're a child of the devil. You will not intimidate me. Then you start marching around your building, anoint the windows with oil. I suggest you pray, and then you wait. Because God hears. And the, and the answer has left its point of origin. Ecdemachai, and it's coming your way. Are you with me today? Do not allow yourself to get rattled and don't respond incorrectly. Number six, and I'm gonna to come to a close in a few minutes. Has this helped you today? God's delays are sometimes God's blessings. Oh my. Another Greek man I read about, he, in 2019, he was on his way from one flight to another, and you know, sometimes they come and they meet you at your flight and they walk you somewhere. Well, this person took too long. When he got to the next place, he was supposed to fly to Nairobi uh, from Addis Ababa, they got there two minutes too late. He could just see them moving away from the gate. Frustrated, annoyed, he had his ticket and everything. But guess what happened? As he stood in the airport, six minutes later, the plane crashed just outside Addis Ababa. You know how happy that man must have been that, that, that he had his boarding pass. And uh, he, he's a Greek guy called Antonis Mavro, Mavropoulos. But he, he goes home with that boarding pass. I thank you, Jesus. I don't know you, Lord, but now I know you. Some, ble some blessings in your life. That could be the delay, you're frustrated, but it could be the biggest blessing in your life that you ever had. I believe in finding a way to win. I believe in pushing doors open. I believe in going ahead in faith. But sometimes when you can't get a wedding venue, <laughs> you never know. It could be a blessing. Have you been helped today? Awesome.